Oh my gosh. We got Walter Bunning, Ken Thomas, getting reloading, Dusty Bowhunter. You guys are all here. And guess what I'm doing? The foresight. Is this awesome or what? Oh, you guys can't see it now. Dang it. I just lost enough light. You can see the laser, the green laser, but you can't see the crosshairs. Hey, Rajma, if you want to get it mounted, come on over. I have everything, and I have a sight light uh, laser. Hey, and we'll, we'll even live stream it if you want. You don't have to, but you have fun. Be a good time. So, um, this isn't going to be very long at all, really. Um, uh, I hope everybody's had a good day. I uh, got my, my scope mounted. I haven't locked tight with anything uh, because we'll be using this setup for our, our live stream uh, scope mounting that Greg Morrow and me are going to do. Uh, no, not right now because <laughs> uh, it, it's so late in the evening. Um, but we, we can do it. Let's talk. I got you, Sam. You're in my phone. Um, uh, this is going to be a busy week, uh, but possibly Sunday. Um, you know, no, I didn't lap the rings. I've lapped um, rings in the past, but I didn't lap these. I, I, I wanted to do it. Um, I wanted to just do it just like this. And um, I have the entire um, uh, scope mounting kit. I have all of that. Um, I had my uh, alignment, um, I don't know what you call them, the alignment tools, uh, and they just, they were just perfect, but they would be, because it's all machine one piece, but no, I didn't laugh, them. I didn't. Um, oh, I can trust my neighbors, and I don't care if they don't trust me, if I'm not breaking the law. <laughs> Uh, I've done this a lot of times anyway. Um, I've actually had people walking by and like walking their dogs. They, they, they kind of like to walk up to my garage and watch. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me at all. So um, I'm just going to um, adjust my, my elevation. And so I'll kind of let you guys uh, check this out. This sight light, it times out. It's got the... Um, There we go. So my elevation, I'm about two inches low. Uh, this scope is a quarter minute of angle. So a um, uh, quarter minute of angle at 25 yards. And by the way, um, I'm at 28 yards. Um, I have my, my range finder, so I ranged it. It's 28 yards. So that's going to be um, that's going to be 16 clicks per inch, okay? 16 clicks per inch. So I'm just going to click it real slow. You can just watch that. Green laser, it's just going to come up. Just imagine, you know, the center of that scope. Is your crosshairs? That's 16, so that's going to be one inch right there. Looking a little better, isn't it? But we're, we're still a little low. I know because when I want to have a little more light, I can see the crosshairs. I zeroed it and then I backed it out. There, I had zeroed it before uh, I turned the live stream on and, and I backed it off, uh, dropped it two inches. And so um, I knew that I had to come up at 32 clicks. So um, kind of neat, really, um, to come out here and mess around with this thing. And I, I'm not the guy, I'm not the guy that can tell you everything about like minute of angle and, and, and all of that. 
you know. But I, I know enough to get around the, the woods. Um, minute of angle, 25 yards going to be 16 clicks. 50 is going to be 8. Um, 100 is going to be 4. And 200 is going to be 2. 2 clicks. At 200 yards, 2 clicks is an inch. Um, 25 yards, 16 clicks is an inch. So, all right, I'm going to read some comments. See what y'all got to say. Uh, Rage uh, Walter saying he got trouble with a neighbor once with a laser foresight. <laughs> um, hey, Chris Rowbacker, what's up, buddy? <laughs> Guns are so scary. People that don't have guns is what scares me. That scares me. Um, Dusty, he says, uh, never used a laser. I just look through the bore and it gets me on paper at 100 yards. Yeah, I always used to do it that way. Always used to do it that way. Well, to be honest with you guys, I really haven't mounted very many scopes in my life. And the, the reason is, is for one thing, my father, he loved to mount scopes. You've got a rifle and scope. He, he, he wanted it, period, in his discussion. So it was easy. Take it to dad, and he did it. But we would go out and do it together and watch him do it. You know, but the other thing is once you put a scope on a rifle, it's there. It's not like I, I you know, go through 10 rifles a year, right? So you don't really, uh, you don't mount scopes that often, but it's, it's not hard. Bore sighting at 100 yards, um, pull the bolt, you know, and you, you're going to, you're going to, um, Set your target up, put your dot in the middle, center to the bore, and then you're going to drop your crosshair. So that and it hits you on paper, right? Uh, but this is neat. This is this uh, bore sighter. I'll tell you something about this bore sighter. You got to go 25 yards with this. You can do it at 10. No, but no. You've got to be 25 yards. That's what you need. Um, hey, Jeff Moore. We got Andy 79Z28. Um, So, uh, Chris, he says, I just got done with a long day turning an old boat trailer into a snowmobile trailer. Cool. Well, that, that kind of stuff's always fun. <laughs> well, we, we got 19 on. I just want, I just thought, I thought, you know, I was, I was sitting here messing with this. I thought, no, this would be a cool live stream. And I asked my wife, I said, you think this would be cool? She goes, oh my gosh, turn it all on. That is awesome. <laughs> Pretty cool. What was funny is I was out here. And uh, my neighbor started mowing his lawn. <laughs> so and he, he I, I just shut the laser down, you know. And uh, I, I've got a, yeah, as you guys can see, I got my flag in the bolt, right? So, you know, he never noticed. He just had his headphones on, kept uh, mowing. Oh, okay. What scope is it? This is the uh, Bushnell. It's their AR optics. Let me show it to you. Um, Right here. I'm, uh, <laughs> you guys are going to be so disappointed in me. Um, okay, watch this. Watch. Got two of them. And I got them last year uh, before Christmas. Um, Cabela's had these really killer deals on scopes. And it's taken me a year to get around to mountain these. It's, I'm so pathetic because I just had been so busy, you know. Um, uh, so I'm, I'm getting them on. And um, uh, I have, uh, I took uh, Thursday and Friday off of work. So tomorrow night I'm going to go zero this in. And I'm going to get to do some shooting Thursday or Friday. So I'm going to get to play with this. And, and uh, yeah, that's what I'm doing. So that's the scope that it is. Um, I couldn't tell you anything about them, but I, I think Bushnell puts out a, a pretty good product. And I'm going to be honest with you guys on something. Um, I didn't pick the Bushnell 
because it's a bushnell. I didn't pick bushnell because I got a bushnell rangefinder. To be honest with you, for what I'm doing with my rifles, I just got the best deal, the best bang for the buck. What's on sale? In my opinion, for what I do, they're all going to be good. I didn't want a cheap scope. I wanted a good scope. And Cabela's had a heck of a deal on them. And uh, so we bought them. And uh, probably this year for Christmas, I'm going to be going out looking at more scopes. If I see something on sale, um, last year's closeout, I'll probably pick one up and stick it in my safe for a day when I build another AR-15. The other scope's going to go on my other uh, AR-15. I've got a handle on that one. And so um, I'm going to have to remove the handle and get it all set up to uh, mount a scope. I have no idea how that's going to work. No idea. Never done it. But once I do it, I, I know then I know how to do it, you know. But actually, my my Air 15 has got the I don't know what you would call that. Um, it's got the handle on it. Um, I know what, they got a name for that. Um, and I don't know if I want to put a scope on that. What would you guys do if you had a, just a typical Bushmaster? It's I think it's called the Policeman's Model, and it's got the Got the, uh, um, you know, mill spec handle on it. And uh, would you put a scope on that or would you wait and build a custom AR-15 and put a scope on something more customized? Like like this is my wife. You guys know I built this AR-15. So I, I'm kind of curious. What would you guys do? Would you, would you remove the handle and put a scope on? Or I don't know. Do they make an adapter where I can leave the handle? Uh, I, I don't I don't know how they work. I, I really don't. So what would you guys do? Andy's saying scope it. Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm kind of thinking I'm gonna scope it because I wanna I wanna figure out I'm I'm sure the handle just comes off. Um David Wright, he's saying leave the carry handle. Hey David, man, it's good to see you, brother. He's saying leave the carry handle. Hmm. Man, that's a... Uh, and he's saying remove the handle. David Wright. I would not put a scope on it. I would. You believe that plain sight. Okay. I don't know what you're saying. Um, Ratchet man carry handle with open sights. Um, Power hunter saying go EOTIC. Okay. Um, range mutt. Put a scope on a custom rifle. you got to remember sometimes with guns less is more. Yeah. I kind of. Gosh, these are such, you guys are killing me. I'm going back and forth, back and forth. Um, uh, David's saying, I would not put a scope on it. I would leave that. Play. I, I think he's using Google. He's speaking. I think he's saying, I would leave. If I were you, I would leave that plain sight. Hmm. You know, I can remove the handle, put the scope on it, try it out, and then put it back. That way I know how to do it. Because, guys, i got to tell you, I have I have a few parts put back under the bench. There some of my beginning. I, I have two. Um, I have two uppers in my safe. I have my uh, stock. I have my hand grip. I have, they're all BCM. So problem is it's going to be another I don't know I'm about a year out before I have the money to really do the build. You know Chris Probacker. In my opinion, I scope it as I do with most rifles. I have one rifle that's not scoped, and that's my 303 because it has a flip up sight. Yeah, I get it. The David Wright is that an A3 removable carry handle or is it part of the upper receiver like the M16? I think it's removable. It's buried in my safe, but I think it's removable. Can't, then I can, I'm with Rash, man, I leave it open site, then I can build another one. <laughs> um, Walter Burning, the air I built is one of my best shooters. I'm luck, I scoped it. This one I built for my wife, it's an insane shooter. Um, for my first air build, I think I did really good. They were right, go plain Jane iron sights, but if you do, have to have a removable carry handle. You can mount a scope without having it all jacked up in the air. Sorry about the garble earlier. That's okay. That's okay. It's te technology. I get it. Wow, that, you guys give me some good stuff to think about.
you know, I'm, I'm, I still call myself new to AR-15s. You know, I, I've been shooting them for a while now, but it's, and, you know, and I did my first build on YouTube. I did all mine out of the book. I didn't, I didn't go to other social media sources to learn. I it was all on me, and of course, I didn't have um, people with knowledge that I could call on the phone and ask them questions. But hey, good night, Ken Thomas. Good to see you. But but um, I built my first Air 15 just by my book, out of the books, bought my books. I was reading up on them, and I built it. But I don't feel like, you know, I think just because you shoot an Air 15, I think if you really want to know what you're doing, I think you got to build three or four of them. I really do. And another thing, when my house is paid off, I want to, I want, I would really like, when my house is paying off, I'd like to take some training courses with my AR-15, you know. That, 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 that's what I would like to do. I, I um, yeah, I, I think that, that there's a lot to learn with AR-15, kind of like sky's the limit. I just don't want to be this guy that can go out there and just pull the trigger and plink. I want to know everything about it, and I want to be very proficient with it. So that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. All right, we got 21 on. So this must have been the most boringest live stream in the world. In the world. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to close the garage door. We're going to change what you're looking at. You might see... You might see the crosshairs. <laughs> there you go. I can totally see the green dot, but you guys can't because it's it's. <laughs> I really have to to drop it. So, um, all right, I'm gonna back this up. I'm gonna back this up here. Oh my gosh, I'm like the only channel in the world that, oh man, I carry my viewers around and I get them all sick and confused and, and all this. So, so there you go. That's what I'm doing today. So I had a, I had a pretty, a very, uh, my day at work ended up being very fast paced from about noon on. I was just, gosh, I, I could not keep up. Should not keep up, and I didn't get, even get everything done. So tomorrow I got to go on extra early. I'm going to work late because I'm getting Thursday and Friday off. I want to get everything off my plate. So Thursday and Friday I don't have to think about having extra on Monday, you know. And so I came home. I mowed the lawn. Lawn all mowed. Leaves all picked up. Then I made some killer halibut. Just for the hell of it, you know, killer halibut. Just for the hell of it, that's what I did. Anyway. There, there, that's that's a little better. So I made some halibut just for the hell of it, and I got some rub I put on it. What I did is I took a, I took a glass thing that you cook in. It's a thing. You know, those glass things. And I warmed butter up and I put it in there. And I just turned the halibut in it. And then I put some um, lemon juice and I got this rub that I put on there. My wife, she loved that rub. She said it's good. So I put it in the oven at 400 degrees and we put that big old thick halibut as a piece of it like this. I'll tell you what. I'll post, I took pictures. I will put the pictures on the the chat group so you guys check it out. Cooked it for um, a little over 12 minutes and it was fabulous. Fabulous. And we had golden Yukon baked potatoes and um, steamed broccoli. Are you guys hungry yet? My wife can't stand fish. Can't. Shake that, and she's ready for some more. And we've got more. We've got another big chunk of it left. And so that's what. And then I did that, and I came out, and 
finished mountain scope in a bore sight but you guys like okay yes I have Thursday off so rest it man I was gonna text you after this um I have errands I have to get done Thursday and uh, I'm thinking if you could be in my house about three o'clock if that's too early that's fine but I should have everything done about three you get here about three that gives us a couple hours before Miss Highway comes home and uh, if you want okay everyone just so you know ratchet man is gonna come and see my wife and I and we're gonna go out we have a Mexican restaurant that we're gonna go to it's fabulous some of the best Mexican food that I've ever had there's one place that was better but it's, it's no longer in business it's a little mom and pops and then this lady she was so good and so um so we're going to take ratchet man to dinner and then we're going to come home we're going to have pie we're going to have a live stream we're going to have a good time so i'm thinking that'll be after dinner we'll live stream with a ratchet man watch the show at three what do you think ratchet man three sounds good whatever happens happens um you know we could go over here to the indoor range and I got some pistols, we got some ammo, we could shoot it up. I got I got a, a lot of nine, a lot of forty-five, and I got the I got the pistols. If you want to do that, but it's like they, they want a lot of money to go shoot. This is beyond. Almost fifty bucks just to go shoot. I pay fifty bucks a month unlimited shoot. But just to go one time. I don't I'm sorry, I don't want to pay fifty bucks. For one time, or something like that, right? Ratchet Man loves Mexican food. This is uh, this is like this is no fooling. Good, good food, good food. You you will not be disappointed. And um, it's you know, funny uh, Mexican food. Um, yeah, it's high. It, it's high, but it's they have two twenty-five yard indoor ranges. One of those is a tactical where they have strobe lights and static targets. They move, you know, and, and stuff. And and then they have a hundred yard indoor range. Okay. But it's a lot of money. It's, it's a lot of money. Hey, Power Hunter, um, he's out. Good to have a good one. We got, we got loads of bacon on. How very cool, man. So um, Mexican food? One time? I was gonna get some Mexican food. My dad and his buddy, they're sitting in the front room and they're just talking. This buddies, fishing buddies, hunting buddies, and they go, Where are you going? I said, I'm gonna get some Mexican food. And they said, You don't know what Mexican food is. I said, Oh, I don't. I said, No, nah, you have no idea what real Mexican food is. I said, Um, okay. So when I got my Mexican food, and they're those dollar tacos. All they have is the, oh my gosh, the sada, the cow tongue. <laughs> I love that. And all it has is whatever meat you want. It has the onions. It has the cilantro and the hottest sauce you could put on there. So I bought like four of them, right? And the uh, mandarin haritos to go with that. Oh. That's so good, but I got two extra tacos from my dad and his buddy, and I I went home. And I said, "So you guys know what real Mexican food is, huh?" He said, "Yeah, we wrote the book on that boy. We know what real Mexican food is." I said, "Good, you'll, then you'll enjoy this. It, it'll be like old times for you." And I put it on some plates for him, and I just kind of warmed them up and gave it to him. And my dad said, "What the hell is this?" I said, that, Dad, is what you call real Mexican food. There's no cheese. I said, Dad, that's Americanized. The Mexican food you're thinking of is Americanized. They don't use cheddar cheese. Real Mexican food doesn't have all this deep fried chimichanga. They don't even have a chimichanga in Mexico. It was made up in America. 
And I told my dad and his buddy, this is real Mexico. And my dad, like a day later, goes, I hate real Mexican food. I'll just stick with the Americanized. So where we're going, it's Americanized. It's, oh my gosh. But it's top notch. Top notch. Huge portions, too. Huge. You're going to go. You're going to be so full when you leave there, Ratchet Man. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Wow. Your local gun shop has an indoor range. $17 an hour, but he gives a six-month path with every gun purchase. You're paid up till you die. Um, you know, I have another indoor range we could go to. It's really close. It, we should do that. I have another indoor range really close. <laughs> the only problem is they really don't have much of a range officer. You get what you pay for. We <laughs> can get shot there. That's why I'm laughing. I don't like to go there. Because cause there's like people going, hey! people talking. You know, I mean, the range officer is the guy outside. There's a monitor that they watch, but his back's to it. And he's bringing people up and checking licenses and renting guns. And once in a while, he'll look up there, you know. But so I don't know. I don't know. If you want, you know, we could go look again. We, 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 we could go. We'll, we'll do something. We'll figure something out. Ratchet Man. Um, okay. Uh, Rage Man. When. Um, he's saying, hell, when you buy a gun at the range that High Boy is talking about, all you get is a one-time pass. Oh, yeah. I didn't even know they gave that. But I will say they got range officers. And for 50 bucks a month, unlimited shooting, that is awesome. Another thing, if you pay your 50 bucks, they'll let you stay there quite a while. They don't rush you. So I do like that. Actually, my wife is jealous. She likes Mexican food, too. Send her along. Send her along, buddy. She can just go hunting with you. Oh, yeah, I think the ventil uh, Okay. I, I think the ventilation at the new one is really good. The ventilation at this cheap one, sometimes good, sometimes bad. It's dumb to get. I'm afraid of some of the goobers. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, 10 4 on the tongue sandwich is darn right. Nothing wrong with cow tongue. Oh, man, that's so good. I, I haven't, I won't, okay. The range I'm talking about, I can be there in three minutes. I used to go there a lot when it was the old owner. They really watched it. And then this place, they bought it out, and I've been there like three times. Every time I go, every time, I just, I can't believe how stupid people can be with guns. I can't. You guys know something? You want to know something? Okay. I'm clear. No mag. This is what people do. If right here... Is where I'm going to shoot. You know what people do? They come over here on the table and they load their guns. And they come over here like this. I'm not lying. I mean, most of the shooters know to load it right here in your down range. And you got people over here. And they get it all loaded. They bring it over. Another thing. Another thing. When you're at the range, um, okay, when you're at the range, this is in a gun rug or a case, and you open it where you're going to shoot. You don't open it back there and, and sweep everyone with your muzzle and bring it over at this other cheap range. A lot of the people do that. They don't even, they don't even prep them or tell them what to do. There's nothing. 
you're kind of on your own. It sucks. And so you got muzzles sweeping everybody. Yeah, it's a cheap deal. Hope you can afford a cheap funeral, you know. Another thing, we had a, a guy commit suicide over there. No, no range officer kind of watching people, you know. So he goes rich again and commits Harry Carey right there in the indoor range. You know, thank God he didn't want to take someone else with him, right? Um, so I don't know if Ratchet Man really wants to go. It, it's a nice place. The guys are nice there. It's just, just not really that safe, you know. And you got to be the range officer. So, man, if I was telling on everyone that was sweeping the place, I'd never get so I'm, I just go to the desert, the Independence Indoor Range, one or the other. Hey, Lux SM40, it's so good to see you, buddy. Hi, boy. Yeah, I had a couple of serious social encounters with guys loading behind me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 400 a year for a Canadian Indoor Range. Well, I, I don't know what the Canadian dollar is like to American, so I don't know if that's good or bad. Yeah, people take gun safeties if it doesn't matter. I got to tell you guys this. True story. True story. I'm going to be so embarrassed. I don't, I'm also want to tell you this. Yeah, I love to go to the desert, but this is a, a story of the desert. I go to the desert. This was years ago. I was like maybe 25. I'm 53 now, so it was years ago. And... This guy, he, he kind of comes up to the left of me, you know. He doesn't come up to the line. He's like back a little ways, like, you know, his muzzle is behind me. And he's probably a good 40, 50 yards off, but he needs to come up a little more, right? So I'm thinking, well, maybe he's going to shoot that way a little bit. And I'm watching him. And he starts loading these revolvers. He's taking these revolvers and he's setting them on the hood of his truck. One by one, he loads them and he's setting every one of them on the hood of his truck. God is my witness. It's Jesus Christ is my witness. This is what the guy starts doing. I'm going to be so embarrassed when I show you guys this. But it happened. He starts doing this. Like that. Oh, my God. I was like. And he empties out his first six. And I'm, I got my I got target set up. I got I got my rifle set up. This guy's being a complete idiot. I walked over and I said, What is your problem? That's what I said. I don't care. I got a revolver right here. What is your problem? What are you talking about? I'm hip shooting. I said, No, you're not. You're not hip shooting. You you aren't even even with me. And you got your muzzle and you zinging bullets all over the place. And you got every one of your revolvers loaded on your hood. So oh, nothing wrong with that. I said, no, you do not load your firearms and stick them on that hood. About that time, these other guys come pulling in on the other side of him. This guy's pissing me off. I mean, he's pissing me off. I said, no, you're wrong. You're wrong. You need to pull your freaking truck up. You need to bench, wreck, bench these pistols, and you need to shoot like you're serious. Right? <laughs> you know, he's Joe retard, and I go back to my truck, and I'm all pissed off. Right? And I'm thinking, I'm just leaving. I'm just leaving. The next thing I know, this idiot, he starts going like this. And he's doing it again. The guys on the other side, when they pulled up, they saw me and him going at it. They knew something was wrong. Well, next thing I know, they come walking over to him, and I thought, well, they're not too happy. So 
I went over talking to him and I just said, we need, we need to get the sheriff out here because you got a problem. You either unload those guns one at a time and leave, or I'm calling the sheriff. You know, and of course, we didn't have cell phones back then. Well, I just drove to town with his license plate. And so, you know, he was, was all hurt, you know, the stupidest people I've ever seen. Most people in the desert are, are you know, they're pretty much aware of the backdrop. They watch their muzzle direction. But every once in a while, you get someone like that. And you want to know what he was shooting? Right here. He had a slug of Ruger three screws on the hood of his truck. And they were all loaded because I, I, I counted his shots, six shots out of his revolver. So I don't know if y'all know about this. Okay, all Ruger three screws. This is the safety. One click back. Ruger got sued over that. That's why they went to the new model. No longer three screws, just two pins, and you didn't have to cock it back two times to open the loading gate. Now with the new model, we open loading date, gate and you turn the cylinder, check it and close it. But on the three screws, Ruger got sued because that failed. And this guy's got a slug of these revolvers on his hood, fully loaded, the safety on every one of them, and he's got them sitting all over his hood with his muzzle pointed in every direction. It is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Andy, you going to bed. So here's our talking. Not listen to me. Hey, I don't have nothing good to say anyway. It's all good. Well, I always have a good time. All right. So I think um, it's like uh, eight fifteen my time. I'm gonna. It's time for my Bible study. I'm gonna go read my Bible and visit with my sweet little wife. Yeah. He had three screws loose. All right. Yes, he did. He did. <laughs> okay. We had 26 on. And so what we're going to do, this is, um, um, something of right, Ratchet Man saying something, but i um, not sure what it is. Anyway. Okay. So. I want everyone to type, um, how far do you shoot rifles in the desert? Um, I, I just go 100 yards. Um, I, you know, mine's just a typical rifle that I used to hunt with. And um, I've never, you know, I've always told my guy since the beginning of time, you know, I, I, I actually, I'm sorry, I take it back. I mean, I go out to 400 yards. And I go out, I, 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 I zero at, at 100, and I'll set my targets up to four. But I really don't, I really don't take my rifle out a lot. I, I don't. I'll take it out two, three times a year just to keep the polish on it, you know. Um, I, I am, I mostly shoot my handguns when I go out there because I love to uh, rabbit hunt and shoot the squirrels and that kind of thing. And the other thing, um, when I say 100 yards, just because I like to shoot the squirrels with my rifles, you know. So, um, like my uh, lever action 3030, of course, those are open sights, but um, our, our, 20, our, our rimfire rifles, those are scoped um, 100 yards. And then the, the, uh, the Air 15, I got a scope on it now. That's going to rock. With my this Air 15, now I'm probably going to start going out further. That will be a lot of fun. So, Okay, uh, oh, okay, Jeff's out of here. We're going to do this. I want everybody to just say what you want, and I'm going to call you out, and we'll, um, I'll be having a live stream tomorrow night. Oh, yeah. I'm going to be swaging some primer pockets. Yes, I am, and we're going to run them real time on the Dylan 550 behind me, real time. We'll see the difference of priming without swaging. And priming with.
medium speed, some drag is out. Ratchet, uh, dub the kid is out. Ratchet man, yeah, call me tomorrow. He's out. Begin reloading is out. Soldier signal, soldier 31 out. Dusty Bowhunter out. Chris Robacker out. Sergeant Sandman is out. David Owens out. KJ Shooter out. You guys are awesome. I, I, I didn't know you were going to do this. To, I, I realized this would be cool. Uh, <laughs> Rage, Rage Bunny is out. Sergeant Sandman is out. Um, Walter Bunning is out. Okay. So, okay. So look forward to our live stream tomorrow night. I'm going to put a good one together. We'll be swaging primer pockets. I got my new RCBS tool, the one that uh, Walter told me about. We'll get Walter on live. And um, I'm going to be swaging real time. Um, we're going to, I have, I, I will, I'll give you a, a preview real quick. These, um, by the brass guys, if I don't swage these, I kind of have a difficulty seeing the primers so the primers won't seed all the way. So now with this new RCBS, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to seat some of these just as they are. And I'll show you how some of them, the primer won't seat all the way. And then we're going to try the RCBS tool and, and we're going to seat with those and we'll just compare them. You see real time. So that's what we're going to do tomorrow night. We get a live stream. Okay. Um, oh, okay. Oh, world 16. It's good to see you, right? Five o'clock mountain time. Five o'clock mountain time. Okay. Guys and gals, that's the end of this video. God bless. See you tomorrow.